Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, longtime unschooling mom and author. Join me and my wonderful guests for interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free introductory ebook, What is Unschooling?, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia, and this is episode number 88 of the podcast. It's the 6th of September, 2017, as I record this intro. Where I live, the kids went back to school this week. And I gotta say, I've really been enjoying all the not back to school photos that have been popping up in my Facebook feed. It looks like you guys are having a lot of fun. That's wonderful. And this week, I chat with Jenny Gomes, an unschooling mom of three kids, ages two to eight. If you've listened to most of the episodes, you might recognize her name. Jenny was on the podcast just over a year ago, episode 25, and we chatted about her de-schooling journey. I thought it would be really fun and interesting to touch base with her again. She graciously agreed to come back on the show and answer the same questions, but now with another year of unschooling experience under her belt. So that means you guys can listen to her previous episode and then this episode to see how her understanding of unschooling has evolved over the past year and how things have changed in how it plays out in their daily lives. I hope you find it interesting. And I haven't mentioned it in a while, so just a quick reminder, the podcast is now available on YouTube. I'll put a link to the channel in the show notes. It's called Living Joyfully with Unschooling. And I'm going to change the intro up a bit this week because I have a bit longer personal update. So first, I want to say thank you to everyone who has chosen to support the show on Patreon. And a big welcome to new patron, Bea Montavani. Bea has translated some of my blog posts into French on her blog. You can find links to French translations on my website at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash French. Thanks so much for joining the podcast crew, Bea. And I deeply appreciate all my patrons. It may sound a bit trite, but you guys really do inspire me to explore helpful and fun ways to use the podcast to share unschooling information with anyone who's curious to learn more about this wonderful way of living and learning in the world. And if you'd like to support the show, even for as little as a dollar a month, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash exploring unschooling. And this week's quote is from Jenny. I feel like it's her trust in us and confidence in herself that catapul catapults her development. Now she was talking about her two and a half year old daughter, and I loved her observation that it's those two things weaving tightly together that support her daughter's growing and learning. It's trust and confidence. That's the trust that comes from knowing in our hearts that we have a compassionate place to land, and it helps us have the confidence to stretch ourselves and our comfort zones just that bit further into the area where challenge and competency, dance, and learning thrives. It's a great insight and an example of why trust between parents and children is such a valuable component of unschooling. And now as a personal update, last week I mentioned that the Childhood Redefined Unschooling Summit was coming soon and things have gone smoothly enough since then that I can share that pre-registration will open this Saturday. That's Saturday, September 9th, 2017 for those who may be listening in the future. And I'm sorry if you've missed it. But pre-registration will be open for a week and there's a pre-reg discount. It's our thank you for your patience as we pulled this next evolution of the summit together. And I love that it came about because you guys asked for it. So many of you let us know last year that you were disappointed that you couldn't make all the sundry things around an in-person event work, like the travel, the hotel, the food, the childcare arrangements. So we set about creating an online edition that you can fit into your life however works best for you. So in the online summit, you'll get more than eight hours of video content lovingly created by Ann Oman, Anna Brown, and myself, all focused on living unschooling with your family. And of course, we know that people have preferences in how they consume information, so all the summit content is available in video, audio, and text format. So maybe that helps explain why it's taken us so long to pull it all together. 
But once you register, you have access to the content for as long as you want. So you can watch, listen, read the transcripts or any combination thereof over and over. This is one of the huge benefits I see and love about moving the summit to this format. There is so much value and learning in revisiting our thoughts and ideas surrounding unschooling. I started unschooling back in 2002, and I continue to make new connections and understand the lifestyle more deeply through my conversations with people on the podcast. Sandra Dodd and I talked specifically about this in our most recent chat, which was episode 71. So here's something she said, which I thought was such an important point that I chose it as the quote of the week that week. She said, no one is ever likely to read my whole website and I don't ever need them to. It's not written to be read from one end to the other any more than a pharmacy is intended for someone to start at one end and eat, drink, or inject every substance in the whole room. If you find a page that does help you, guess what? It will help you even more if you read it again after a year or two. And if you read it after you've been unschooling for five years, it will seem that the first time it was a black and white postcard and now it's a Technicolor movie because you'll understand it better and you'll see the subtlety and the artistry of what people wrote and maybe you'll wish you'd been able to understand it better sooner. So that's what super excites me about sharing the summit in this format. There are wonderful things that come from gathering in person with other unschooling families and parents, but there are also amazing things that come from working to deepen our understanding of unschooling of our children and contemplating the parent we want to be. I suspect that you'll make new connections and gain new insights into unschooling each time you revisit the summit content in the months and years to come. You can check it out at childhoodredefined.com and come Saturday, there will be lots more detailed info there and you will be able to officially register and join us. And I'm struck with the serendipitous nature of the summit launch and this particular podcast episode coming together. I couldn't have planned it better if I tried. This episode is a shining example of revisiting things to make new connections and see how our understanding of unschooling has grown. And my love for that aspect of the unschooling journey explains why I was so excited to chat with Jenny again a year later, to revisit the same questions with her new perspective, to try to give you a glimpse of that more colorful and blossoming understanding in action. So without further ado, let's get to the interview with Jenny. Hi everyone, I'm Pam Laricchia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Jenny Gomes. Hi Jenny. Hi Pam. Hi. Uh, <laughs> just to let everyone know, Jenny is an unschooling mom to three young children and we thought we would try something fun today. <laughs> Jen- yeah, Jenny was on the podcast just over a year ago, so episode 25 and I will put the link in the show notes and we chatted about her deschooling journey. And she has graciously agreed to come back on the show to answer the same questions, but now with another year of unschooling experience under her belt. So you guys, yay, yay. (laughs) you guys can listen to her previous episode and then this episode to see how her understanding of unschooling has evolved over the past year and how things have changed and how it plays out in their daily lives. So I'm Definitely looking forward to diving back into unschooling, Jenny. Um, To get us started, can you just give us a quick reminder, um, share a bit with us about you and your family and how you first came across the idea of unschooling? Hi, Pam. So there's five in our family. Um, I came across unschooling after my daughter, Madeline, attended JK. And after our shared experience with the schooling system, I decided to explore a few other options. (laughs) So with myself, my husband, and um, my three kids now, uh, we've all decided to move into unschooling. And because we did, we practiced attachment parenting with all three of our kids, unschooling just felt like a natural extension of that. So that's how I've sort of come into, into unschooling. That's beautiful. And thanks for the little update. Um, So let's go through this question. What were some of your bigger fears or uncertainties as you first began unschooling? And so now, what do they look like? Um, So I knew that in order to do it right, I had to commit. 
um, I had to commit to unschooling. And, and that was really hard for me at first. So I think the biggest hurdle was accepting that the schoolish ways or my schoolish definitions weren't the only measures of intelligence, right? So for example, it was hard for me to accept that my kids wouldn't be able to read or do math until they were older. And so once I accepted that, um, and once I, ex and once I started to focus more on what they could do instead of what they couldn't do, um, it changed my focus completely. And that's when I really started to dive into unschooling. And that's when it more doors started to open for me. Um, and so the more that I read, the more light bulb moments that I had, and the more that I looked at them, the more wonderful things that I saw, and the more peaceful that I became, because the more comfortable I became, and the more we settled in just to day to day, day to day life. So that's sort of how it went from becoming really hard to just stepping back, looking at it, and then settling into something a little bit more calm. <laughs> it goes back and forth, doesn't it? Right? Like, oh, absolutely. It's yeah. like a step, we take a step, and then and then we watch, and we see some things in them, and that gives us a little bit more confidence, and we like take the next step, and see how, how you know, um, how our new way of interacting, or, or even just our new way of seeing things, um, we see that reflected back in the kids and it's just back and forth and back and forth, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing to just watch them grow and learn and take things in. So it was finding comfort with that. And then my own ideas of schoolish ways and stepping away from that, not being the only indicator of intelligence or that not being the only valuable thing and focusing on what it is that they learned that they knew already. Um, that really helped me. Yeah, it, it's, that you're right. That committing to taking the time to widening, well, how we define learning, right? I think that's it mm -hmm. because because yeah, we are so trained growing up that you know there is a specific way to measure learning and intelligence, right? Yes, and, absolutely. And that's that's the right way, and that's like it's it's bonus points if your kid is like three and knows how to read, right? It's like yeah. wow, you must be a great parent if your kid knows how to read that early. <laughs> Exactly right. It not yeah, only it's not it's not only a definition of our children, but it, it's a definition of us and our role as absolutely. parents, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So stepping away from that, I think, was was hard for me. Mm -hmm. But then once I got over that, um, that really helped me dive into unschooling because the more I read about unschooling, the more sense it made. Um, it's like one of those things that you fe you feel like it's like a thread in your mind that just. Once it's, and you mentioned it, it was a quote you mentioned in one of your first podcasts. I remember it's like, once you see something, you can't unsee it. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. so I remember, I remember that quote, like once you learn something and the more I learned about unschooling, the more I couldn't just avoid that. I had learned that. Yeah. Right? It's like the seed inside you, right? Keeps, Absolutely. And then it starts to grow. And the yeah. more you nurture it, the more it grows. So that's sort of how it happened for me. Oh, maybe thinking of that, like you you said up front, um, it was choosing to commit to it. So, you know, the seed is yes. in there. And, you know, every once in a while, these connections start peeking through. Oh, look, that relates to that. That relates exactly. to unschooling. And then when you choose to commit to it and you bring that seed out and you start nurturing it and actively um, taking care of it and looking for connections and everything. Yeah, that's a that's a really nice metaphor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, has your relationship with your husband changed as your family has embraced unschooling? Uh, yes, absolutely. So I I used to think that we were sacrificing all this time together because. We had we were spending so much time with the kids, but it's funny the opposite happened because we started to notice more and acknowledge the time that we do have. So this is a change. So I used to think it was, you know, everything was depleting. Time was depleting. Every, you know, my energy level was depleting. But I just when I changed my focus to think about the time that we did have. I noticed that we had so much more and it was so much more valuable, like a quick kiss as we walk by one another, right? Or holding his hand while we drive, or having dinner together, because sometimes the kids don't always want to sit at the table with us. And so we treat those like date nights, like we mm -hmm. catch up on our day, you know, we, mm -hmm. we catch up on our day really quickly together, sitting at the dinner table. And so just noticing that we actually do have a lot of time together if we pay attention. 
Um, so that was also, that was really cool. And I've also learned, and this one took me a, a while. I learned that it doesn't make me any less of a feminist to appreciate him and all he does for our family. And that's really, truly the reality of it. Mm-hmm. And in turn, like what happens is he ends up feeling more loved and appreciated and he's more loving to our family. And that one was a big one for me because I resisted that one for a little while. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. I really had to learn that that really doesn't make me any less of a feminist to really appreciate him and say, you know what, thank you for you know, I work part time. He works full time. I work part time from home with my kids. We have this wonderful nanny named Jane who plays with the kids uh, in the morning if I have to do something that's more intense or work related. And and, he, you know, he works every day. He takes the train into into the city and the train back and he's commuting two hours a day and he does it for our family so that we can, you know, we can provide mm-hmm. this wonderful life for our kids. And it took me a long time to accept that I'm I should appreciate him for that. And that's okay that I appreciate him for that. So, mm-hmm. and it made a big difference to us because once he felt appreciated, he was more loving towards our family. He was like, okay, I'm feeling acknowledged. Thank you for acknowledging that I do. This is the way that I support our family. And so, you know, it's, um, we've come a long way in that regard and that's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is too, I've come to realize that this unschooling journey, um, it really has little to do with not going to school. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And it has so much more to do with uh, like living in harmony and living the best possible life that we can on this earth during our time here. I'm going to get all philosophical, but I can't help it. <laughs> right? Go. And we've, co- we've come to understand that it's like a philosophy of our life, which is mm-hmm. why I think that there's so many layers to it and why there's so many people that are so passionate about it. And they stay interested in it because it's so much greater than not going to school, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it's it's at the heart of breath of most philosophical beliefs. Um, anything that I've learned about, like you can see threads of it in every philosophical discussion. Yep. Um, and that's amazing. And it's so funny because I thought about this when I was putting together some thoughts for our chat. And mm-hmm. uh, Sandra, and this is just the way the world works. On her Just Add Light and Shine uh, emails that she sent out, Mm -hmm. um, the one that was called Two-Way Change, she wrote, unschooling is more than just the absence of school. As we change, our perspectives change, and the perceptions of others towards us change as well. And I was like, yeah. (laughs) So it's, it's really about so much more than school. And then this is the other thing is people can see it. So when you're living a more authentic life. And that's really such an overused word. But when you're choosing peace and being grateful Mm -hmm. and, and, and choosing more, people can see it and people all around you can see it because I are, my husband and I, we get approached all the time by like complete strangers who admire us playing with their kids and they come over and they talk to us. And at the beach this year, one lady actually said, when you guys are here playing with your kids, it's like a ray of sunshine on the beach. Isn't that beautiful? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's just so incredible. But people see it and they'll come over and they'll talk to us and they'll say, the way you guys are with your kids is so incredible. And, and so when you, when you're living this life and you're appreciating all of these moments, people see it. Like, it's not just you, it's other people see it too. Like, it's like a, an actual thing. It really is. And I mean, <laughs> I got goosebumps through that whole answer. Um, it was <laughs> totally beautiful. And I mean, just because I just finished writing my unschooling journey book, so much of what you're talking about connects so well with this whole journey that we're on. And it grows so much more than just not going to school, right? It does. Oh my gosh. It just becomes a lifestyle. And yes, I remember those times where we're just complete strangers would just come up you know, to, yeah. to say so hi cool. and to, and to just, you know, Hey, I saw how you guys were, you guys, I, so many times, like, you know, it, it happened with Lissy and I, and it happens with Michael and I now, like places that we would go to, like say the dojo, right. Or, or mm-hmm. girl guides, or even now, um, to the diabetes clinic, right. I was just there with Mike this morning. People will say, you guys are always smiling. 
you know, because oh. because we're going back there, right? So they see us consistently. They're just like acquaintances that, and most often we don't even know their like I don't know their names. They're parents at the dojo who see us on and off, you know, when we say hello and goodbye, um, and stuff like that. And and so many people surprisingly will come up and comment because. Like you said, you're just living there. You don't realize, right? You're just being no. yourselves out in the world. But it's true. People um, will see that. You know, I, I, I talk about how, for me anyway, that is where I have my my joy. I don't feel like I need to go out in the world and um, convert or convince anyone. I know. Right? Mm-hmm. It's just we are just out in the world happily enjoying our lives. And people notice something different, right? They do. They, they do. really do. <laughs> and and then you planted another seed. Remember, we got that seed there. Hey, that's and, right. You know, even even in my um, children's friends, right? Because they may be parents one day. Yes, so you true. You know, so mm-hmm. it's just like there is a different way to be um, between adults and children. And it's just knowing that that exists, whether or not they choose to, you know, take that seed and do anything with it is it's not our call and it's not our need to, you know, control or convince or anything. Right. But, it's just a different way. It's like yeah. they, they come over and they're, they're almost like, I want to know your secret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. and, you know, I don't, I don't get into like unschooling conversations mm-hmm. or anything at, like that about with anybody and or at all. Right. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't get to that point, but I do say, you know, and anytime k- people will say, Oh, you know, you got your hands full with three kids. I said, you know what? We have a lot of fun. We yeah. have a great time. And I love spending time with my kids and people are almost taken back when I respond that way, but it's the truth. <laughs> and the other seed I plant often like, um, at the dojo, right. Um, because, uh, uh, they, they'll they come and say, oh, Michael um, must practice a lot at home. <laughs> and 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 in that, un- the undertone of that question is like, you must be telling him he needs to you practice must be a te- lot at yes. home. <laughs> yes. And I say, yeah, no, he loves it. He takes his, you know, nunchucks or his bow and he's out there, you know, for hours. And And just flipping it for them to say, oh, you know, this is his choice. And and that's it for the seed planted, right? You know, and and that then that they can just walk forward with that. Hmm. You know, it's true. They can choose. Hmm. We don't need to yeah. control, maybe, right? So that's that's always so fun. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you share what you've learned as you move away from control and punishment as parenting tools? Are there patterns that you've discovered as to when, you know, those urges come up? Okay, so I've actually learned they're a total myth. So, in <laughs> fact, I think the only pattern that I've noticed is, is that using them breaks away at any relationship and not just the ones with our children. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's so sad that they, that they are justified in some places or that people still believe that they work this day and age. It just breaks my heart. But one thing is that I do love the idea that our children are whole people. And somebody mentioned, I tried to find who it was that mentioned this on one of your podcasts. Um, but they said that children are whole people. And so when they come into this world, our job as parents is to really just teach them our ways. Mm-hmm. Right. And yep. so and respecting them as whole, complete people. And so that visual brought up on one of your podcasts has actually really, really helped me daily with um, my kids and how I interact with them. Um, And so that's been really, really helpful for me, too. And so my 2.5 year old, she's two and a half. She likes to say that she's five. You have to ask her. (laughs) (laughs) That alone tells you she's wise beyond her years. So my two and a half year old, she's been radically in school now her entire life. Right. And if she's any indication of success, of success as a result of unschooling, then, you know, we have to be doing something right. My husband and I actually were at the beach and we said this to ourselves the other day. We're like, if she's any indication of what an unschooling child is, like a fully, completely since a baby unschooling mm-hmm. child is, she, he's like, we're doing absolutely something right. She's smart. She's funny. She's articulated, opinionated, passionate. Uh, she's really all the proof we need. And then I feel like her, her, 
she's it's like trust in us and confidence in herself that catapults her development like Mm -hmm. she's amazing she's actually fully swimming now she'll dive right into the water she'll swim to us and people are just like how is your two-year-old like swimming (laughs) in the water like did you have to dunk her head (laughs) yeah (laughs) no I didn't have to dunk her head she did it all by herself You know, like she just really, she did it doing flips and all this. And people are astonished at how amazing she is. And it's really, it's trust in us and her own confidence that just catapults her, like strides. And so it's, pre- it's pretty amazing. I love that image. Yeah, it, it, it's such a huge shift in perspective, isn't it? To see kids as capable, as whole people already. Yeah. Just yeah. exploring their world and figuring it out, right? Yeah. And knowing that you're right, that trust that we have in them, they can take that on um, and and use that um, as a stepping stone, maybe of of confidence, because they know that they can always come back to you, right? So that they yes. can they can take that little extra step because they know Absolutely. there's the safety of you always being there, um, you know, without judgment but with support, right? So maybe they feel just that little extra you know it's okay if I fall yes you know if I stumble because I know that they'll take care of me so they they can put that just that little extra bit of effort or or stretch their own comfort zone just that little bit right to try something new Mm -hmm. yeah and that's what she does we see it we see it all the time with her Mm -hmm. beautiful (laughs) Um, so how do you handle the daily challenges that come with having three kids of different ages, temperaments, and interests? Uh, so I think this is where I've grown the most actually, because Mm -hmm. when I read, when I read this question, I honestly don't think of it as a challenge. I think of it, um, now as an opportunity to see what we'll do on any particular day and how we'll handle any difference of opinion and what comes up during that time together. Like, that's how we learn. Like, that's how my kids and I really learn to be together. What we like, what we don't like, what we need to do to feel comfortable and what, what we're kind of hoping that'll happen. It's like problem solving 101. And my kids mm-hmm. are like experts at it too, especially my two year old. Like she <laughs> has a voice. She has just as strong as a voice. There'll be times when, um, you know, accidentally I'll forget to ask her. I think there was like one or two times I'll forget to ask her, you know, what did you want to do? And she'll pipe up and say, mommy, you forgot to ask me. (laughs) (laughs) She, her voice is just as heard and just as respected. And so she has, she comes up with great problem solving too. You know, she'll often go up to my, my son and my daughter and say, well, how about this idea? And she'll run something by them and she'll go, how about that? And then she'll just wait for them to answer. (laughs) You know, zero age has really zero to do with any, any sort of, uh, I guess, any sort of weight on who gets to decide Mm, what, like age doesn't matter when it comes to discussions about what we're going to do or how we're going to resolve any particular issue. It's just problem solving 101. And like I said, my kids are experts. So that's basically how I think of it now. It's just like, hmm, I wonder how this day is going to flow. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what we're going to do and where we're going to end up because you never know. That's kind of like how I like to approach every day. You never really know what we're going to do. We could be at home all day or we might decide to go to Reptilia. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is where I remember that point. It, it, that's kind of when I realized um, that there was such an under, I, I, call, I talk about it as like an undercurrent of joy to our days. Even though we don't know what's going to happen, what, what we're going to do. It's like you were, you were saying the opportunity, right? The possibilities of of what we might do. And I love the way you describe this is probably one of your biggest shifts over the past year, because yeah, when we get to the point, I, you know, from what you, how you described it, um, it's when we, uh, step back from judging things so much, as, yeah, oh my as a good outcome or a bad outcome, but we see, you know, the value in whatever we're choosing to do, no matter how it kind of works out, right? Because we, yeah. we learn a little bit about ourselves, you know, and about the world, you know, why didn't that work out the way we expected or whatever, you know, so they're not challenges anymore because no. a challenge means you're looking for something right, 
right? You're looking for the right yes. answer when, when you're framing something as a challenge. So you're still looking for something that's best, something it's that's true. Bet, you're still judging whatever choice it is that you move forward with. And you're so also you, waiting, you're also weighing whether it's good or bad yeah. in the back of your mind, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so just, you know, with time and having, you know, things, you know, for me, it was me thinking things were going to not work out so well. And yet they did. Mm -hmm. and, for, and me realizing or or they don't turn out well. And we still learned so much about it it's for so the true. next time that we make the choice. Oh, I just love that because it, there you are. Perfect, shining example, because that yeah. that was a huge part for me on on the journey and. Um, it, it really takes time, doesn't it? it you need to just it have does. these experiences to realize oh, all that stress I was putting on each of these challenges and trying to get the right answer rather it was than pointless. talking to everybody. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> everybody can have their input. They have such valuable ideas they do. and thoughts to They share. do. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's that shift from challenges to possibilities, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, so the next question, the curiosity and energy of young kids is incredible. Um, so what are some of the little things that you do during the day to recharge your own energy? You were talking about this a bit in your, um, when you're talking about your husband, right? That you, yes. when you start to notice moments, so when you're mindful true. of moments, instead of looking for big chunks, even with your kids, that, that all of a sudden you have so much more time than you realize, right? It's so true. And it's so funny because I actually made it. That was like it, that was something I wanted to talk about when I answered this question, because when I when you asked me this question last year, I felt it felt draining. Like um, I was taking it in. It was making me feel heavy, you know, like when mm -hmm. I read it. And that's how my days kind of felt. And it was like I was still balancing back and forth. And this time around, it actually returns me to think about my kids' energy and their vibrancy and their smiles and their excitement and the, that their spirit it actually recharges me when I need it. Just being around them recharges me. All I have to do is watch them and be present around them in any moment and just notice them. Like that's, that's how it is. They just watching them play recharges me. And I, and I have, I've no, learned to notice things so much more and actually appreciate them. You know, like how sweet a quiet moment is. And how the only reason it's sweet is because it wasn't it wasn't quiet, you know, maybe five minutes ago when everybody was upset about something. But now it's it's a quiet moment and it's a really sweet, quiet moment. So I'm noticing and appreciating this quiet moment that I get a chance to make a note of a quick con idea that I had in my mind or something, whatever it is I'm deciding to do with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then how thrilling a loud moment is, too. Um, and then. And then also being able to, and this was the other thing too, is find comfort in um, an internal to-do list versus an external one, right? So wow. I might have had a to-do list at the beginning of the day that I had to do X, Y, and Z, tidy up the house or fold the laundry. Um, and all I might have done is played with the kids all day. But at the end of the day, they're so much happier and the laundry's still not folded. But my kids are super, super happy. <laughs> so yeah. that's my inter that's my internal checklist. My checklist that my kids are happy at the end of the day became more valuable to me than an external one that shows that my house is tidy when nobody walks in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what am I worried about? Yeah, that's exactly. That's so true. It's that focus yeah. on the relationship, right? And yeah, and noticing and noticing the moments too is so helpful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and I love you talked about watching them because I, I talk about that quite a lot on the Q&As, right? For me, whenever I was feeling some sort of um, challenge or off or whatever, even even if I didn't know what it was yet, there was just like a discomfort somewhere. Mm -hmm. Watching my kids always brought me and, and still does bring me back to my center, right? As mm -hmm. in, you know, this is... Um, the important thing. So, you know, if it was worry about, like you mentioned earlier, they, without needing to fit into the school um, classroom environment, reading does usually come later, right? When, yes. When it's not needed and skills like that. 
So if I was starting to feel uncomfortable because I had some sort of conventional timetable running around in my head for some reason, focusing back on them, I could see um, all the learning that they were doing and and remembering how much I value all that learning about life that's going to be useful and helpful throughout their lives, Mm -hmm. you know, versus all these little, you know, facts and stuff in a curriculum that may or may not, you know, that they probably won't remember. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my favorite thing over the years, right? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. That's one thing that I love, right? So so that's Mm -hmm. like when, when I do, when I do start to, um, when somebody does start getting into a conversation with me about homeschooling and unschooling, I often open up with that. Like, how much do you remember about what you learned in yeah. school? Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and that's one thing over the years that has gotten stronger and strong, a belief that's been got, gotten stronger and stronger inside me is that you really don't remember much or it doesn't make as much sense unless it is related to something in your lives, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For it for it to understand something better, it needs to connect to other pieces of your life so that it makes sense, so that you can put it in your in your picture of the world, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm describing that well, but it needs no, to connect no, to something it's or exactly. else it's just floating around. Well, it's funny, Pam, and you know, today I was supposed to do yoga in the morning on the beach, but then it was raining. And so I ended up sitting in front of a convenience store with three old, older ladies, retired <laughs> ladies, because up here at the cottage, most everyone's retired. And mm-hmm. so we sat, it was in pouring rain, but we had shelter. We were just chatting. And there was this lady who's now retired, who was saying that when she was younger, she had read a book about uh, a beach, a beach comber. Mm-hmm. and she remembered it and it stuck with her her entire life wow. and now that she was retired she wanted to buy a metal detector and in her retirement she wanted to comb the beach and what mm-hmm. a simple thing and I said to her I said what a simple thing that you read when you were little and it stuck with you and now you finally have the freedom to do that and quietly I observed in my mind that the opportunity that I'm giving my children is that I can do that with them now when they're little. They don't have to wait till they retire to feel like they have the freedom to do that. Yeah. Isn't wow. that that right? <laughs> like right? they don't have to when waste all of this comes. time, right? Yeah. Figuring out that there's a connection to something that they value and that's important to them that they want to do. They don't have to wait till they're like 65 to do it. They can just mm-hmm. say, mom, I really want a metal detector. And I can figure out a way to get them a metal detector so that we can go out on the beach and they can <laughs> use it. <laughs> right, right when that, that um, interest or that urge is fresh and it's just, yes, you can just, you know, I just imagine these little tendrils of urge, right? Yes. Just wanting to connect, wanting to connect, wanting to learn more. And so we true. are able to help them find things to connect to it right then. And yeah. I think they make such strong connections, strong um, connections so that, well, I guess strong is probably the best way to describe it, but, yeah. and, and we can help them expand it as much as they want. And it's totally okay if, you know, right. one of them goes somewhere totally different or, yeah. They kind of, I've gone as far as I want. And I want to back up a little bit and I'm going to go right. out this way. But a lot, I think, you know, the learning that they do um, in this fashion is just so much more powerful um, and lifelong because yeah. it's making strong connections. It's something. It's when it's meaningful, when it's meaningful to them. Meaningful. Right? Great, great word. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And when it's meaningful to them, that's when I think that the the learning connections are just so much stronger than when someone's slapping telling you oh you know this is connected to this we do this and then we do this and then yeah. we do this those just <laughs> seem such like such weak connections right <laughs> makes no sense yeah no um so what has been the hardest part of your unschooling journey so far 
Uh, so the internal work I had to mm-hmm. do was has definitely been the hardest part of my journey. And then finding a balance, because I feel like I teeter-tottered for a while, like on a roller coaster, sort of going back and forth between two extremes, like giving more than I could to my kids, then feeling justified and taking it back. And then mm-hmm. I always felt like I had to be doing it right. And if I made a mistake, if I got angry or frustrated, I'd, I'd get discouraged and I'd feel like I was messing everything up. It was like a vicious cycle, you know? Mm-hmm. And for a little while, I just, I until it happened, that was, it was like that until I found some stable ground. And it, I find that I do still teeter totter, but like, it's not as like high points and they're not as low. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's sort of like, it's not as, as mountainous, I guess, as it would have been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, I can, if I can describe it that way, I don't know, but that's what it feels like now. It feels like I'm finding a little bit more of a balance. I got, we're in a little bit more of a group and I'm not going to lie. It really helps that they're getting older. Mm-hmm. because reasoning with my eight-year-old is so much easier than reasoning with my two-year-old. And not just, is just like common sense. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, and it's yeah. funny because I'll often talk to people and, um, and I think people just forget like the toddler years, like people forget mm-hmm. childbirth pain. You know, you forget yeah. how hard it is to give birth until like you're in the moment again. And then you forget yeah. how painful it was. And that's how the toddler years are. Like it can be really gruesome sometimes trying to, you know, like <laughs> just mm-hmm. re- re- reason with a two year old. Um, and you want to respect them and be, you know, but it can be it can be challenging. So it definitely helps that as they're starting to get older, that I can they're, they're open to more reasoning, especially my my eight-year-old like it's amazing how much she's grown in the last three years and the and how she's through being being radically unschooled um Mm -hmm. oh my gosh it's incredible you know my mom sometimes she'll say well she watched them recently for a day and she's like you know Madeline really she should be in school she should be reading she was um she didn't pick a wrapper up off the floor. (laughs) And I said to her, really? I said, well, she cleaned out my entire fridge yesterday. (laughs) You know, she's just one of those kids that's like, mom, I think we should clean out the fridge today. She literally took everything out of the fridge, wiped the entire thing down and put everything back. And I was like, okay, sure. I'll help you. (laughs) But she didn't pick the wrapper up off the floor, you know? So it's funny, like watching them, watching things like this and paying attention to them is just, it's, it's, it's gasoline for me. Like it adds fuel to my, my mm-hmm. passion for, for unschooling. Um, so yeah, oh, it definitely yeah. helps as they're, as they're getting older. And then a funny thing happened too, because as I began to radically accept them, I love that term, by the way, radically mm-hmm. accepting your children. Um, yeah. I also started to radically accept myself and my partner. And so that I was able to be more gentle with myself too. And then when things did happen, um, I would be kinder to myself about it almost, right? Like I didn't have to, I didn't have to follow through on continuing to be grumpy. I had the tools to be that I needed in order to be kind to myself and realize what is it about what I'm feeling right now? What might've happened? Did I, do I need to go and take a walk? Maybe I didn't have my cup of coffee this morning. You know, maybe I need to eat something, you know, there's got to be a reason why I'm feeling this way. I'm not a mean person, you know, I'm not usually grumpy. So I just, I began to radically accept myself and my faults and then my husband's too. So I wasn't so hard on him all as well. And that really, really helped us too. Uh, so that was really helpful. (laughs) <laughs> That's beautiful that you mentioned that because uh, that was something I was going to mention the the kindness and the acceptance of ourselves. Yeah, um, I think is what helps that roller coaster not totally get, be so mountainous, right? Yeah. Because because we aren't holding on to things so much more tightly before yeah. we're able to let go, right? Yes, and, very true. And let things flow more a bit more naturally, like even to notice our moments when we are um, getting uptight before we're super uptight. Yeah. Right. And, and taking that out and having it um, affect a wider area around us, maybe, you know, but part of that is totally accepting that it's okay for those moments. Like you said, that kindness is so important and it goes out to, um, you know, 
one I found it was hardest for me. I found that I, I learned that acceptance from my kids and I saw them accepting themselves yeah. when things went wrong, you know, and, and moving forward and keep trying. Whereas I would have been devastated, you know, cause I was just so used to judging, um, myself as wrong and bad when something right? went wrong. Right. That's we our are schoolish just... thoughts. Yeah, yep, exactly. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So used to judging ourselves and feeling bad. And then we, we just aren't bringing our full uh, selves to each next moment because half of our brain is still pounding on ourselves, right? Yes, so true. Yeah. So I think that that um, stage where we um, open up and start to accept ourselves, our nature as as human yes. beings, that sometimes things go wrong and that's okay. Sometimes I'm not feeling my best self and that's okay. And to be able to accept that more quickly or more easily helps um, temper some of those swings up and down. Right? Uh, exactly. It, yeah. 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 That's, that's it. Exactly. Uh, oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Oh, there's uh, one, there's okay. a couple more things yeah. I wanted to mention sure. under this one. So the other one is I do find unschooling lonely sometimes. Like I'm so grateful to, for the podcasts and the information and all the free information that's out there with your page and Sandra's page. But like one on one, I do find mm-hmm. it very lonely. So I, I'm, I'm trying to make more connections with people. Um, mm-hmm. I find that with, I, I think I was a, I was a member of the Lush League. I'm a Lush League leader now, and I found that there's so much of that for babies, mm-hmm. and there's so much support out there for like attachment parenting for babies. But as soon as they go to school, there's like nothing. Right. Yeah. Unless you're, you're, unless you're following like a certain discipline criteria or something, there's really nothing out there for, um, unschooling parents. So I do find it kind of lonely because my friends don't parent the same way I do. And so I don't really find their advice very valuable. You know, I try to take information where I can from some pieces that they might add, but not very much because all it does is end up making me not feel good. So I just, I just, you know, separate myself from that. Uh, And, 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 you know, that too has grown with my confidence in unschooling as well. And so I actually didn't tell people that I unschooled for a really long time. And even now I don't. Now I i don't a lot of the times. It depends on who I talk to, but I am mm-hmm. definitely more comfortable talking about it now than I used to be. Um, I just didn't even go there before. Um, yeah. So, and the other thing is too, like I, I, I find it a hard balance to... Um, like a, a, for me to decide what my own idea of how my children's skills are and, and their development versus societies. So mm-hmm. like I've been rereading Sandra's page on Facebook, a lo- on, um, on, not on Facebook, on freedom. She's got this mm-hmm. page on freedom. So I've been reading that a lot recently and I've been trying to figure out a good balance because I find that there's lots of limitations on kids b- based on their age um, mm-hmm. in, in society. And that's been a real challenge for me now because I feel like my kid, like my daughter, for example, Maribel, who's two swimming, mm-hmm. like dunking her head and swimming across the water to me. Um, most two year olds can't do that. And so a lot of people think she's drowning at the beach all the time, or they'll look at me and my husband to see if we're paying attention. Right. And we, yeah. we know we're watching her, but then, you know, that might come across as bad parenting too. So I'm finding it hard to, find a balance. And then my son too, um, he's a fantastic swimmer and he's limited at our local pool because of, he's five and apparently you can't swim unless you're six. So the fact that he, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he's not six yet means that he can't swim. So he, I had to actually meet with, you know, the regional manager of recreation and I got him to pass the swim test again. And so he can at least jump off the diving board now, which is he was so upset when he couldn't jump off the diving board at a local pool because he wasn't old enough, even though he can swim like two ways across the pool back and forth. So I'm now I'm at the point where I'm having a bit of a challenge navigating that mm-hmm. um, um, with, within the limitations that society has without coming across as like a bad parent. <laughs> yeah, no. And I tell you, that is um, something that I found and lots of parents have found that as our kids get older and start, um, doing, uh, more things out and about where there are these more conventional rules, 
um, that that is where a lot of our effort is. Our support for them is yeah. like, hey, I think and our child wants to do something and we think they're capable and and it is finding out, well, who can I talk to so that he can jump off the diving board? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That is literally a lot of our work. Like, Jeez. You know, Mike, Mike moved up into the adult class earlier um, than the typical age for kids at the dojo, you know, because he was already, you know, paying paying good attention you know what I mean he, he that's already right had because the they're, mindset they're, and the approach they're motivated they're intrinsically motivated to do that and when they are and they have that drive they do it they do it at a mm -hmm. fast pace yes because it's their choice right exactly they, it's something they love they throw themselves into it yes so yes a lot of our um work I guess is but a lot of our effort goes into helping them um, find That's a space where they can be themselves there. So yeah, it, it is sometimes meaning, Hey, you know, I think they would enjoy this activity, this class, this, whatever. And it's just talking to the people and saying, Hey, you know, they're, they're at this stage. They have this skill already, you know, so many times, like I remember a photography class, Lizzie went to, I don't know, she was 13, you know, and it's full of all adults. <laughs> right because it you're finding the interest and you're finding um peers at that level it has nothing to do with age but yeah, it's for true. kids out and about in the world it has everything to do with age right it, everything so it's just us like you said not confrontationally yes um, with them not trying to come across as this badgering helicoptery pushing mother but you know what part of it too is accepting that people may see me as pushing yeah as in as in the motivation I, you know I never um act that way you yeah know what I mean it's just hey you know is there just a advocating we're just advocating, advocating. for our kids yeah. right like uh, yeah, my exactly. son is a good swimmer and I feel as though if he doesn't get the opportunity to continue to learn to be a good swimmer and he gets held back like he had that actually I, I actually have an example of that because he did swimming lessons and he was swimming at the lake with no life jacket for most of his life. He was four at the time. And he went and did swimming lessons. And the swimming instructor told him he had to wear a life jacket. And if he didn't, he'd swing to sink to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> and so, and so mm -hmm. every time yeah. he gets to the deep end now, he's afraid and he wants to put on a life jacket. If you go, well, he's finally gotten over that now. But for a while, it took him like almost a month to get over the fact that he would not sink if he didn't go down mm -hmm. to the bottom. If he didn't wear a life know, jacket, right? just because so, they because they trust what adults are telling them. Exactly, completely, <laughs> fully, and completely. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. No, that's yeah, and right. That's the word I was missing. Advocating. Yeah. So it's just advocating <laughs> for our kids and being like, uh, you know, he is he is able to do it, and um, I feel like I'm okay with him doing it. So what do we need to do in order to allow him to continue to practice his swimming skills because I don't want to yeah. hold him back exactly I and, don't want and being okay with the loops the, yeah you know, my gosh there's loops that they yes. want you to jump through yeah. it's like okay yeah. I'll, I'll do that swimming test again or <laughs> yeah, you know exactly. they just they, they want to see this they want to yeah. see that that's and, fine and you supply it and yeah you exactly. do what you can to make them feel comfortable with their so choice that's been, yeah that's been this sort of new thing that I'm kind of starting to explore now as the kids are starting to get older and the oh, other, so yeah, the other mm -hmm. part is too that like I, that I'm, that I'm kind of seeing come up is like, I'm struggling to accept each of my kids passions with equal vigor. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the times one of my kids keeps me on my toes and feeling like I need to do more internal work on myself. So that tells me that there's still some areas that I need to grow in. I feel like I've come a long way, but, um, this is the one piece that I feel like Sometimes if I'm more interested in something, I might be more excited to help out with this than I am mm -hmm. about helping out with something that I'm not as excited about. <laughs> yep, yep. So it's trying to find that like equal vigor for, you know, for everyone that I'm, you know, yeah, starting to oh, explore yeah, that, that a little level, bit. Yeah, that level of self-awareness of ourselves. Yes. Yes, right? yes. And, and to notice when, oh, geez, I'm giving this because it, it can also be a negative when you're overexcited about something, too. Right. Yes. Because your kids can feel, oh, 
well, she is like really excited and they can start to feel a bit of pressure to keep going with it longer than they might have chosen because you're super happy. And then, you know, the other, you may um, discourage the other one. So yeah, it it is. That's, I talk about, and Pam Shrushi mentioned it as well, that dance of relationship, that dance of parenting. Because I love that you know, that quote. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, because it's not it's not um, this is all about being human, and we're just going to um, dance with people and notice. Oh, gee, maybe I did a little bit this, and I pull back, and and somebody leads for a while, and somebody else takes over for a little bit. It's always that um, do a little something, observe what happens, right? You know, mm-hmm. see, oh, maybe I, I was a little overexcited here. Oh, maybe I can help out a little bit more there. It, it is, I like, you know, living mindfully is just a good mantra for me. Yes. Just to, to remind myself to pay attention to all of it. Yes. You know, just even, just to pay attention to myself, to pay attention to the environment and how I dance with that and with mm-hmm. the other people that are in my environment. Um, and, and it helps losing that judgment of ourselves, right? Because then we can see things more clearly as well. And it's okay if, oh, gee, I think I overstepped that. I'll be careful next time. I think I want to step up more over here. It's just... Um, making choices with our days and knowing that we have like full control over ourselves. Yes. What what we choose to do even, and we don't have to beat ourselves up if, if we, you know, took a misstep and stepped on somebody's toes. Exactly. Yep. It is life and that happens. Yeah. Um, But it's not, you know, that happens. So I'm just going to be like a bull in the China shop and charge them however I want. <laughs> no, you know, you're trying to, well, you yeah. know, it's, it's that dance, right? I say one thing, but I got to say the other. <laughs> yeah, you do. You got to be kind to yourself. And it's so funny how like being kind to your kids mm-hmm. or be allowed, like it allows you to then be kind to yourself. It almost teaches mm-hmm. you how to be kind to yourself and that personal growth and that personal work was the hardest was hard for me, but I'm, and it's still something that continues. And that's the interesting thing about it because it's the layers. And we go back to that, the, the, one of the previous answers, it's the layers of this unschooling life, right? Like the more that you delve, the more, the more there is, you just, you start to scratch the surface and then there's always more. And that's the part of it that I love. Yeah, I know exactly. I love it too. And, and it is something that doesn't, go away like like you were talking now that your kids are getting older and starting to do more things out you're finding oh I'm peeling back these advocating layers yeah exactly and (laughs) they're gonna keep getting older no matter what you do (laughs) yeah 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 so there is you know there's the next thing and there's the next thing and that's what's really and and you know there's even when they're older there's the next thing in their lives and and the next thing in ours as well so you know, realizing that this is life as it is. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to solve things and figuring this out so that I finally have the answer. No, so we're going to be dancing forever. Right. The, which is the great That's thing. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Last question. What's been the easiest part of your journey? Uh, there have been so many. So, um, you know, just being around my kids and watching their faces light up, being close when they're sad too, like, being able to hug them when they're upset about something, you know, just being close to them, even when they're angry, just being able to see all of that and be present there for them, for all of that, being that one person who's there for them, for all of that is, has been incredible. And then the flexibility, oh my gosh, for unschooling that we have to travel or to day trip or to just stay home all day when it's snowing outside. Like, oh my (laughs) gosh, that's the best. Um, And then (laughs) finding information like the pure generosity of the people that we have in this unschooling society like you and Sandra and and it has been so amazing to find it's been so amazing to find information and find these resources and then you know watching them learn so much about themselves and and like watching Madeline the other day she goes mom that says caution why is it saying caution Mm. about like oh wow you can read caution I didn't say that out loud but (laughs) yeah (laughs) Oh, cool. (laughs) And Matthew, you know, tracking his soccer scores because he loves soccer. So Matthew has gotten into soccer too. And he will, and this is how you can really tell because 
he will play soccer for an hour after soccer ends. Like he will mm, play the soccer yes. game and then him yes. and, and my husband, like everybody has left the field, but the two of them yeah. are still playing soccer out on the field because he doesn't want to leave. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, so exactly right. It's the coolest thing. And like he's tracking his soccer scores going, daddy, you know, we have to wait. We have to get two more points so that we win the game. And my husband's like, you know, you're only five. They're not really tracking the scores yet. So keep it. on. The... He's like, we're going to win. <laughs> it's so exciting. And so, and then learning from them too, like, they have these amazing insights if you just listen, right? All these oh thoughts. And the other day, Matthew was walking along the beach. He's like, Mommy, it's so amazing how I can, you know, tell my arm to move like this and it just moves. Or I could tell my leg to, and I'm like, you know what, Matthew, you're right. I never even thought about it that <laughs> way. You know, I can just do yeah. it. It's like a quick, he's like, and how does that work? You know, and so we got into this big, long discussion about the nervous system and the brain and how, you know, it's the coolest thing, but they allow you to take a step back from your everyday life and just think about the little things, being able to move your hands and being able to move your fingers. And so just having those experiences with them has been the easiest and best part of this journey for sure. I got to say, I know their insight and the way, the the connections that they make from things out and about, the insights that they pull. I swear, like when any of them wanted to chat and have a conversation, I was like, I'm dropping everything, you know, (laughs) (laughs) unless someone was bleeding to death in the corner, I'm going to have that conversation because it's so fun. Yeah. Right. Just to hear where their mind is going to hear what they're, what they're thinking. Right. Yes. It's, it's like, just, it's like a window into um their thoughts just Mm -hmm. just to see where where that connection went and then where that went and then where that went like just and and then all of a sudden an hour's gone by (laughs) yeah you know i think it's it's just it's it's it to me it's wonderful because it's pure like it's Mm -hmm. it's non-conventional you know like they haven't been trained out of or been sped through life and told what's important and what's not important it's just pure Yeah. And you know what, what's really fun too, as they get older and they're spending, you know, more time, you know, even for my son who, who, um, was more of a homebody, right. And he liked to, um, play games and, and play online and stuff like that. I've said before, seeing, uh, my other ones, my other children who like to go out and about and do more activities in groups, but they still had the same, came across the same insights because they're still relating to other people right Mm -hmm. so to see their insights as well when they realize how different their family's life is um and why you know they start to understand why we've made these choices it's not like oh cool we, we sit down and have those conversations with them but they make these observations right Oh, cool. And they see how things are out there. They see how they see other kids making choices and they're observing, right? Because that's just what they've always done. Mm -hmm. And they observe other choices kids are making. They observe other parents interacting with those kids. And we have so many interesting and fun conversations about the, the insights that they have just about, um, wider society differences in oh in wow people, backgrounds of families that's when conventional messages come up in conversations oh i and can't yeah. wait <laughs> oh it's just so fun They're, the way they observe and they are so um they're they're accepting too right they're not judging because judging isn't something that we do right Mm -hmm. so they see that and they they're like they're like why 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 would they choose that why would they need to do that you know and people would come kids would come and visit at our house and would just be more excited and so conversations about that oh you know when we go over to their house we can't do xyz so they're coming over here you know (laughs) but it was all like this is life we're just navigating life as it is and people as who they are on their journeys like not not expecting that they can change things or not expecting that other people should change yeah right but the observations and insights that they have are just incredible as they start navigating the world on a wider basis as well so oh cool 
Yeah, that's I, fun. I look anyway, forward to that. <laughs> I probably talked enough. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me, Jenny. It was so fun to chat with you again. Oh, I loved it, Pam. Thank you so much for the opportunity again. Oh, and thanks so much for sharing. Well, I'll have to talk to you again in another year. (laughs) Oh, I hope so. I hope so. (laughs) And before we go, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Uh, That would probably be Facebook. Um, I also admin the Ontario Unschoolers Facebook page. Uh, so those two places are probably the best place to reach me. Excellent. And I will share links to those in the show notes. Great. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your vacation. Thanks, Pam. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. While you're there, be sure to check out the Tuck Talks. For six years, I hosted the Toronto Unschooling Conference. It was an amazing experience, and I loved meeting many wonderful unschooling families. Though I no longer host the conference, the unschooling insights shared by the amazing speakers over the years are timeless. You can listen to all 25 talks for free on my website at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash conference. Until next time, have fun living and learning with your family.